If I don't get new batteries into my Wiimote soon, I will flip a table. Hello there, everybody. This is See What the Plant One here, and welcome back to Let's Play Subspace Emissary. What color is the dress? I don't care. Battleship Halberd Interior. And no, that was not recorded in advance. No, no, no. This is recorded yesterday when the part 11 is posted. That was crazy. It's waiting, huh? Yes, you did, Snake. Yes, you did. Ah, the steam. You know, having played, like, Metal Gear 1 recently, you know, like, all, like, all of 10 minutes of it before Rage quitting, this theme has been ingrained into my brain. Uh, theme of Terra, I think it's called. And it's glorious, man. So anyway, Snake is a special guest character in Super Smash Brothers Brawl. One of the one of the actually the very first third party member or third party character to be included into the Smash universe. Well next to a certain blue hedgehog, but we'll get to him. Anyway, so Snake here. Snake is a heavyweight fighter. He uses a lot of his like little weapons, like his grenades his landmines, his remote-controlled mines, ow, his remote-controlled mines to do battle, and all that other good stuff that he can do. Of course, he can, always, he can always punch and kick to do his dirty work, but that doesn't mean he can still fight. I mean, come on, man. He's been in, like, many Metal Gear games, man. It's all about the Metal Gear games, but we'll get to him when we get to him, of course. Yeah, apparently Snake, apparently, apparently Snake, uh, apparently Lucario Zora can tell him whether the good guys are good or not. <laughs> yeah. So, this is really more like Snake's introductory level, since I didn't really go over, since we didn't really go over Snake, well, before, and now we can, because we can. His up move is overpowered, by the way, that's, uh, his C4, I think. He can use that to ascend, like, really high. Think of it like a uh, villager's balloon move before villager even existed. Yeah, Animal Crossing did get representation, but just not in character form, only in stage form. But regardless of which, uh, this part, we need to go over to different sections of the interior at the Halberd, and we have to, of course, destroy these portals that are apparently keeping switches invisible. Once we beat all the portals and stuff, and we press all the switches, we can move on to the next part of the thing. If the flues can allow me to, that is. Ow, come on, come on. Yeah, that's a side B, that's a side B, by the way. You can, you can use a remote controlled missile thing to do things with. Uh, by the way, little, little chance in hell you'll be able to get killed though, by the way. Because, well, you're in an enclosed area of this place. Yeah, you're in an enclosed area. And there's pretty much no way in heck you're gonna die. But wait, something up there. Hold the lines and everything. Yep, right here. Secret! Alright, let's see what we got. We have a slightly slanted wall hallway. Ugh, I almost threw up a bit in my mouth again. Jeez, man. Okay, so now let's get this. Ooh, we got Blaze the Cat. Noise. Noise. But now it's the time. Now it's the time for these gliders to kill me and these fire permits to kill me as well. That's 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 great. Um I'm just wondering if we still have those two maximum tomatoes. Hopefully. Hopefully we have those two maximum tomatoes still there. And hopefully this guy won't kill me in the end. Okay. Good. And uh, I always keep doing that. I don't know why, how, but I always do. 
Alright, okay, good. They're still there. Cool. Alright, come on. Get up there. Thank you. And thank you. Alright, now down here is the last thing. Where, of course, mites and more primates to kill. And by the way, do not do the thing. Do not do the thing. Oh. Well, you can do that thing. That's that's great. Uh, snakes down A move is actually pretty helpful in Subspace Emissary. Normally, I don't use it, but it's pretty helpful in this sort of situation. What's not helpful is the fact that these guys are racking up percent against me. That's wonderful that it's doing that. It's brilliant. All right, come on. Come on. Ah, come on. Thank you. Uh, boosh. And more boosh. Come on, let's do... Oh, just stickers. Fine. Be that way, game. Be that way. Oh, man, I'm just, wor I'm just worried that my batteries will run out on my Wiimote. Because, well, reason I haven't been recording lately is, well, I can't find any batteries that have suitable, like, um... Uh, battery life for my Wiimote and stuff. Nope, I haven't. So, that's why I've been refraining from recording. <laughs> Even though I could clearly use another Wiimote, I don't have the necessarily batteries. I'm gonna have to check after this recording, though. But, if I do, then thank God I can record. If not, then I can't. And I've been asking, I've been asking my mom if if I could have batteries in there. She said sure, and she's been keeping. She, 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 she. I can't talk, as usual, as per usual. I mean, then again, what what the hell? What the heck else do you expect me to do in that sort of situation? Ow. Um, but yeah, I need new batteries, basically. All right. So come on, kill you, and kill this last guy. Cool, and also you, sir. You. There you go. There you go. And now, this is a bit of a different part, per se. Actually, it's not really a different part. It's more of the same parts you've been through before, except while well, you're in the dark. Woo. Yep, you're in the dark, and you're doing things. Yeah, that's congrat that's great. That's actually good. Alright, so kill you, and kill you. I don't even care that I'm getting all the ow. I don't care that I'm getting all the ow. That's... Jesus. Okay, so... Okay, here. This is a part that will happen. So... You see how I killed that enemy and that thing opened up? Well, in this part, you have to kill all the enemies here. That way, that will be your only means of getting to, well, the tail end of the level, basically. And we got that guy out of the way. Now it's time to get this guy out of the way. Out of the sky. Good thing for Midnight being so cheap, though. Because otherwise, I would have had to deal with that Taltau, and otherwise it would kill me. All right, we get a star. Okay, so that's neat. All right, come on. Kill this Naga guy before you get... Yeah. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Yo. And I believe this is the last guy. That is, if you can fall into the spikes. Not me. I mean you. You! All right, good. That should be the last of them. At least I hope so. Is it? Is it? Yep. It is. So now we're going to reach the tail end of this right here. Oh, hey, I remember them. They were actually a thing. They're glowing with the proper aura. That must mean they're evil. That's a pretty weird pose, like, that the princesses took. It's like, huh. Like they're raising up their shields, except they're not knights. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, now we're gonna fight Peach and Zelda together. Again, this is more recommended for like two people. Since we're basically fighting two at once here. And of course, they can combo you to heckin' back, even though I haven't gotten 1% damage yet. Okay, good. And ow. Didn't think that would hit me, but okay. Okay, so what she's got right there is the bumper. That's the bumper right there. You bump into it, of course, it sends you really far. Of course, if it was sent, if I hadn't it, I would have sent these guys onto the stratosphere and beyond, but of course not. Nope. Because bumpers are actually really helpful in taking out these, uh, taking out, uh, character battles and stuff. They actually are pretty helpful in that, in that sense. Alright, so now I got a ray gun. I gotta shoot you. I'm gonna shoot you. And I'm gonna shoot you, except I can't now. That's, that's great. Alright, come on. Aw, oh, come on. Okay, so apparently Aura Sphere does disappear whenever stuff happens. Oh! Oh, come on. Yeah, see, like... The blast zones in like this are ridiculous. Like they reach really, really far. They expect you to be like, you know, really heavy hitting and stuff. And I've already gotten like 72% damage on this already. And I'm trying to get these guys with a strong hit, but I can't. All right. And ah, oh, come on. All right. I'm just gonna keep on doing this. I don't care. I don't care. The, oh, yeah. All right, so now she's got the spicy curry. I'm gonna die. I'm automatically going to lose. <laughs> Unless I can get them out of the way. I'm actually pretty good at dodging, though. That's the thing. And, oh, wait. Oh, wait. We got another... Bumper. Okay. Sure. Or well, at least I got Peach. Now... You! Fucker! Fuck you! Yeah, seriously. Please do. <laughs> yeah, that's only assuming Snake is like... Snake is like, hey, stay here and don't do anything. Of course you know they're gonna do something. It's Smash Brothers. They can do anything. Now we got Snake on our side, so now let's go to the Battleship Halberd Exterior, where we're going to rejoin the Manly Men heroes. Except not really, because... Sheik now comes into play. <laughs> okay, so since I believe we saved Peach... I believe the only culprit here that we haven't gone over is Zelda and Sheik as characters, so of course I'm gonna go over them. So Sheik is a ninja, basically. The ninja, the ninja before a Grin Ninja was even a thing. So I'd rather play as Zelda first. Uh, you use down B to transform between Zelda and Sheik. So Zelda is pretty much unlike Peach in regards that she can use she can use magic like Din's Fire Side B uh, for Rory's win, which is a tele, which is that teleporting move I did earlier, right here. That's a up B, which is really far. And of course, uh, she can use uh, her neutral special move, which is uh, uh, Nehru's Wisdom. I think I don't know. Yeah, Nehru's Wisdom. Yeah, which reflects projectiles. That's the thing. Aside from that, though, she's got this kick move in which, if you aim at it correctly, you can cause pretty much major damage. So, Zelda can be pretty helpful, but it's really as Sheik where things start to get interesting. Because Sheik is so much faster than just regular old Zelda, of course, with Sheik being a ninja. Using all kinds of kicks and clicks and all that jicks. She can even do like she can even do like a thing where he teleports too. Yeah, and stuff. But other than that, though, her uh, Sheik special moves consists of ninja, ninja nails, ninja chains, which you can continuously keep going by holding down the B button with the side B, and of course, using B down transforms them back. So, I'm a lot better with Sheik than I am Zelda, so, yeah, I'm gonna keep on going with this as Sheik. 
I'm gonna keep going at it because I can. So, uh, oh, I got a cracker launcher. Okay, might as well get rid of that because there are mines everywhere, and mines are not a very good thing. Of course, they're not. All right, so let's keep on going here, and yeah, pressing that switch will activate the fire. Apparently, yeah, fire apparently happens, and. If you go in this room, this room is a very weird room. Apparently, they're keeping all of the enemies that we faced in here. Including this thing right here. I'll make special note of this. This thing right here. That's below Sheik. We don't see that enemy throughout the entire game. This is very weird. And of course, it has to have the music stop, of course. Only to have it start up again. With the same old Revenge of Mennonite stuff that we've been encountering throughout the past minutes. So yeah, now I'm actually doing quite well. Now I'm actually doing well. That's great, and I can't even get them to do the two-hit combo. That's great. Alright, first order of business, get rid of this creep. And get rid of the puppets now. And uh, there's no way I'm reaching. Oh, thank you, puppet, for saving me. You saved me. And now here's your reward. Getting your friend freaking owned in one second. And that guy too. And this guy. And this guy. And there it is. Bada boom. Simple as that. Now it's the point where I speed run this thing. Because, well, face it. We're running on a big time here. And I don't even have to beat you. Because trust me, in my practice, I actually did have, I did fight that guy, and it was horrible. The, the percentage racked up like crazy. Yeah, it did. All right, wait for the camera, actually. Yeah, whenever you get hit or launched, you pretty much have to wait for the camera to catch up with you. Because it actually stays in like a really slow motion for a while. Until it eventually centers back on you. So, yee. That way you that way you'll pretty much not have to be worried about getting launched at all. And it's actually a good thing that I respond as Peach because well, she can easily take care of this last part no problem. Since since basically well the wind's going with me. And if you can see the sun shining right there, I don't know how considering that the freaking Halbert is traveling in a red sky of death. Uh it's how sunlight appears there, I have no idea. But, we did it! And now we're falling off of the side of the ship, that's great. Huh, just casually moseying along while lots of war happens. Just another typical day for Peach. Oh, now she freaks out at the explosion. Now she freaks out. <coughs> okay, suddenly breaking a small portion of glass suddenly decides it to make it unsafe. Also, tea time. <laughs> yep, suddenly tea time. Well, that happened. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you happen to see that wedding ring on Peach? Only in Smash Brothers will you be able to find that. Um, if you happen to rescue Z Zelda, uh, Peach would join your team at this point. But anyway, since we got basically a boss level left, it's only fitting that we do the Battleship Halberd Bridge next. And thus the deaths of all the two-dimensional figures are known. Also, they're not two-dimensional figures, really. They're actually two things. Hey, Peach. Get in there. 
Uh, Falco get in there. Snake in there. And she get in there. Yeah, since basically you're the ones who are... Since Peach was being all like, Ah, oh, now I'm suddenly afraid. You know what? She's gonna fight. You know what? Because I'm good with Peach. I don't care. Ow. Duwan, one of the bosses here. So, Duwan is, of course, two robots all at once. The pink robot, of course, has all sorts of lasers and guns that it uses to fight. And the blue robot, robot is more physical. Making that it can use those dual bladed things to do stuff with, basically. This boss fight isn't really isn't really that hard on the other difficulties, but just be notes that you have to be good at dodging if you want to get up close and personal with with Duon here. Also, which is why I'm murdering. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, which is why I'm murdering uh, Duon basically up close. Um, when the when the pink robot like uh. When the pink side of Duon, like, fires those missiles, they will home in on you, so that's basically your chance to make those missiles hit Duon like that. So, Duon can rack up major damage, basically. And it suddenly transforms into a thing, which Peach is like, ah, I'm gonna sway my butt back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> Game & Watch is so... Uh, inspired by getting an umbrella that he decided to join. That's cool. Also, how come there's no wind going into, like, Meta Knight's command deck or something? I don't know. It's logic of, well, Nintendo variety, basically. Also, Game & Watch is the only one that doesn't have a sort of an intro or something. Nope, it doesn't. Anyway... Now that is it. Next time on Let's Play Subspace Emissary, we are going to go to the Subspace Bomb Factory. So, I will see you guys on the next time. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Thank God my batteries didn't run out. <laughs>